This presentation aims to outline the differences between percentage yield and percentage atom economy calculations and uses aspirin synthesis as a case study. Aspirin has the structure shown here in the bottom right. It has the molecular formula C9H8O4, which corresponds to uh, an MR value of 180.0. Aspirin can be made from this compound here. It's called salicylic acid, C7H6O3, with an MR of 138.0. And this can be derived from the bark of willow trees. So this helps to explain why historically chewing on the bark of willow trees was used to treat toothache before such commercial compounds were available. Okay, let's have a look at how aspirin can be made in the lab. So the first step is to warm the salicylic acid with a second reagent called ethanoic anhydride. That reaction mixture is then allowed to cool and to crystallize to make crystals of aspirin, which can be separated from the rest of the reaction mixture by filtration. So filtering under reduced pressure just means that it's a faster way of filtering. So this separates the crude aspirin, which is left on the top of the filter paper. The crude aspirin is then rinsed with cold solvent, and then the crystals are transferred to a second flask. The second stage of this is to then purify that crude aspirin. So first of all, that's dissolved in a minimum volume of hot solvent. Again, then the solution is allowed to cool and to crystallize. And a second filtration step allows the pure aspirin to be separated. Those crystals are then rinsed and allowed to dry. So it's a multi-step process in the lab. OK, the first calculation that we'll have a look at is the percentage yield calculation. So let's imagine that the maximum Sorry, the starting mass of salicylic acid used in the previous synthesis was 6.00 grams. Let's calculate the maximum mass of aspirin that could be produced from that. So the maximum mass then of aspirin that could be produced from that, we need to work with moles. And again, we need to start off with the ratio. So this is a one to one to one to one mole ratio. So if we've got 6.00 grams of salicylic acid, then the number of moles is going to be 6.00 divided by 138.0. And if you pop that number into your calculator, that's 6.00 divided by 138.0, then the number of moles should be 0.0435 moles. That's to three significant figures because that's 6.00 grams was to three significant figures. So this is a one to one mole ratio. So we would expect the number of moles, maximum number of moles, that is, of the aspirin to be 0.0435 moles. And the MR is 180.0. So the maximum mass which can be made is the moles 0.0435 times by MR 180.0 and that should give 7.83 grams, 7.83 grams. So we know that if we take 6.00 grams of the salicylic acid and react it and manage to um, retrieve all of that product, then we should end up with 7.83 grams of that product. That would be the maximum, so that would represent 100% yield. Let's imagine then that the actual mass of aspirin produces 6.26 grams. So the percentage yield, percentage yield here, is equal to the actual mass, that's that 6.26 grams, divided by the theoretical maximum mass, which was 7.83 grams, multiply that up by 100. 6.26 divided by 7.83 and times that up by 100 comes out at 79.98888, uh, which is therefore 80.0% uh, to three significant figures. So that's a really good yield for an organic synthesis. That's a really high yield, yield for an organic synthesis. However, it's not 100% yield. So some of that aspirin has been lost at some stage. 
And there can be loads of reasons for this. One might be, for instance, in this first step where the salicylic acid perhaps did not have a chance to react completely with the ethanoic anhydride. Another might be in the filtration step or imagine transferring from this flask into here. Some of that product will be left on the sides of the flask. Some of the product might slip through the filter paper and end up inside the, the Buckner flask here. Rinsing the crystals with the cold solvent. Some of the, the crystals might just dissolve a little bit and end up in the solution. Transferring to the flask again, some of it will be lost. Over here, dissolving in a minimum volume of hot solvent, cool and allowed to crystallise. Some of the crystals might not have crystallised and might have instead stayed in solution. Another filtration, so another opportunity for loss of the product. And then finally, rinsing crystals and allowing them to dry over here. So there's lots of places where we might have lost some of the product in all those steps and stages, particularly when the product is being separated, filtration, for instance, and crystallisation, or purified, for instance, with that dissolving the minimum volume of hot solvent or rinsing those crystals with cold solvent. So loss on transfer, um, loss on separation, uh, incomplete reaction to start with, and perhaps some unwanted side reactions. For instance, the aspirin might be susceptible to a little bit of hydrolysis. It might break down in the presence of water. Lots of reasons for the potential for that yield to be less than 100%. So if, hypothetically speaking, any of these steps and stages could be improved, so perhaps by using a higher grade filter paper, so less of the um, smaller crystals sneak through the, the holes in the filter paper, for example, different ways of, of, of handling the, the um, apparatus and the chemicals might in, improve or indeed um, compromise that percentage yield. So the percentage yield depends quite heavily on how efficient and how effective that experimental method is. So now that we're clearer about the percentage yield idea, so the percentage yield tells us what proportion of the theoretical maximum mass has actually been achieved. Now let's consider a different feature of this reaction, the percentage atom economy for this synthesis of aspirin. So the percent atom economy is given as follows. Take the MR of the desired product, in this case the aspirin, divide that by the total of the MRs of all of the reactants and multiply by 100. So to calculate the atom economy for this particular reaction, we already had the MRs for the salicylic acid and the aspirin earlier on. The MR for the second reactant we now need for this calculation, this stuff is the ethanoic anhydride, that's got an MR of 102.0. So in this example, the percentage atom economy will be equal to the MR of the aspirin, which is the required product or the desired product, 180.0, divided through by the total of all of the MRs of all of those starting materials. So in this case, we've got one lot of 138.0 and we've got one lot of 102.0. So that's the fraction of the total mass of all of that starting material, which ends up in the mass of the desired product and then multiply that fraction by 100 for a percentage. So take that um, as a percentage then, 180, divide three by 138 plus 102 um, and times by 100, that gives us a 75.0% atom economy for this particular synthesis, which isn't too bad, but it does say that 25% of the mass of those starting materials is therefore wasted. And in this case, it's there because there's a second product. So this ethanoic acid second product here, which is not a desired product, um, is being wasted. In terms of percentage atom economy then, even if the yield was 100%, some of the starting materials were wasted, so it was always going to be a waste product in this particular reaction. This is because not all of the atoms end up as part of the aspirin product, and it was just the aspirin product in this example that we were interested in. So because a waste byproduct of ethanoic acid is produced, here the atom economy is always going to be lower than 100%. 
The only way that we could change that percentage atom economy is to change the choice of the reaction itself. At the moment, it's fixed. So we've got the MR of the salicylic acid, the MR of the ethanoic anhydride, the MR of the aspirin, and ethanoic acid as a side product. The only way that we can improve or change that percentage atom economy is by changing that particular reaction. The lab method, the, the method of filtration, the um, the way in which the reaction is carried out, the conditions make no difference because this is completely fixed on this equation. It's perhaps important to recognise, and having done a bit of reading on green chemistry, you should be a little bit familiar with this, but it's also important that we don't get confused about atom economy being the be all and end all of this. Let's take this as an example. Um, this is an alternative method which could be used for the synthesis of this aspirin, the MR of this one this time is equal to 78.5. So the MR of that um, so-called ethanol chloride is 78.5. So if we take the percentage atom economy this time, that's 180.0, divide through, by 138.0 plus 78.5 and that should be a higher atom economy than the last one remember the last one was 75 percent so 180 divide through by 138 plus 78.5 and multiply that by 100 of course don't forget to do that times 100 um, that gives a percentage atom economy this time of 83.1 percent which is a good bit better than the 75% previously. But the real problem with this, and the reason that this is not used industrially and is also definitely not used in the lab when we do this in school, is this stuff here, this HCl. This HCl side product this time is toxic. So even though this reaction has a better percentage atom economy, actually the toxic fumes of that HCl that are released make it an unattractive alternative. So key points, percentage yield refers to the proportion of the maximum mass of a product which is made and relates to how effective that experimental method is. For instance, any loss of product on transfer or side reactions that are unwanted or incomplete reactions will all compromise the percentage yield. However, percentage atom economy is fixed for that particular reaction. It's a product of the choice of the actual chemical reaction being used. And it's a measure of the proportion of the mass of starting materials, which would end up as the desired product. So it's a measure of how wasteful that reaction is inherently. Okay, have a go at some questions to see how well you've understood that then, please.